Hello and welcome back to the D&D journal series. It's been a couple of months and so I thought it was about time we start updating Ngashi's journal again. Before I get too far into it, if my voice sounds more weird and annoying than usual, I am so sorry. I've been fighting a pretty unsavory cold maybe or something. I don't know what it is, but my throat hurts and my airways and nasal passages are going through it. So rest assured, I am very annoyed too. If you're new to the channel or this series, I've been working on making a mostly impractical prop journal for my much beloved and much featured on this channel D&D character, Ingashti, my Kalashtar cleric sorcerer. Last we left off, I believe the party had just finished their work at the gala, defeating another slod infestation and having met many influential peoples to follow up threads on. And I set up this next page very intentionally so that I would have two fully blank and empty pages to work on because at this point the party decides to follow up on one of the commissions that they were given at the gala. The party learned that the desert city has had their water source poisoned and I mean if you have a city, let alone a desert city, you would consider water to be pretty important which is why the Ministry of Water is one of the biggest and central most buildings in the city and Lady Steshin is the very important woman who runs the administration. I remember while we were playing, the DM described the building as having many beautiful domes and pillars and archways, and when I started working on this journal, I knew that I absolutely wanted to do a nicely featured architectural drawing over two pages for the Ministry of Water specifically. Also, it's kind of nice to have a fully focused drawing page. I think it suits the recent events very well that Inkashi is pulling herself out of the focus on the loss of Haskell and she's trying to get back on task with what the Empire has requested of her. So I, I like to imagine that she might just spend an entire journaling session just drawing and painting to take her mind off of things and sort of try and reset. Speaking of painting, I don't really use watercolor a whole lot so my palette is not the most expensive and also while this journal does have thicker pages there is a decent amount of uh, bleeding that goes through the papers. I think if I had known I was going to use so much watercolor in this project I might have spent more than eight dollars and opted for a watercolor specific art book but at the same time the warp pages do kind of look cool. It gives the book a very well traveled look I guess so I'm not too mad of it. Also either because of how absorbent these sketchbook pages are or because of how bad I am at watercoloring. It's not the most beautiful smooth gradient of colors but I am actually quite proud of how this painting turned out. Now you might hate me for this because I for sure was going back and forth on this decision for a really long time but instead of just leaving it as watercolor I decided to line the painting in ink anyways as good as it looked without the ink lines. I felt like adding the ink pen brought a lot of consistency to the journal and also it brought a lot of the details forward that I wasn't able to define super well with the okie dokie watercoloring skills that I do have. After I finished with the inks and everything dried on the page, I did end up ironing it just a little at a very very low temperature because the pages were curling very badly. It was difficult but it did work pretty well. I got a couple of odd creases here and there so you know if you're planning on ironing any books anytime soon I would just recommend that you also be careful especially if you have stickers. I had stickers on the other side of one of my pages and I was worried about how those would respond to heat. I was kind of paranoid thinking that they were a little sticky but I think they were okay. There was no like discoloration or anything like that and also I was only pressing the pages for a very very short amount of time on the lowest heat setting that my iron could manage. But on to the next page of Inkashti's journal, our very first encounter after the gala. We ended up entering the Ministry of Water and taking a pretty severe magic contract with the Lady Steshin to investigate and eradicate whatever was poisoning the water source. In the downstairs safeguarded corridors, we finally get to see that the water for the city actually comes from a stabilized rift into the water plane. And for the second time in this campaign, we unceremoniously enter a different dimension. And there we find ourselves coming out of the hollow of a large tree into this magic air pocket deep underwater. We also find a red tattered banner that 
it has a very very cursed aura about it but most importantly we find a 20 foot quite large fish-like amphibious creature with long tentacles and sharp teeth it is an abolith which is kind of one of those name drop DD creatures so immediately everyone is on guard we're all trying to figure out who has the best range spells because very few of us are good swimmers in fact we have a centaur in our party and you know i i hear that horses can be relatively good swimmers uh but i personally just haven't seen too many horses going deep diving in the ocean it was a very tough battle but looking back on it and knowing what i know about aboliths we were really really lucky to have gotten out of the battle as easily as we did the dice were definitely on our side and with joash our busted barbarian actually being able to grapple and hold the abolith in place while simultaneously saving consistently across the various attacks the abolith had going for him our heavy hitters were able to make those close range melee attacks that we otherwise would not have been able to do and we had a much much better time than we should have also surprise i decided to watercolor the abolith and didn't record it at all even though i thought i did which is so fun also i definitely watercolored it after the ink lining to intentionally create that wet watery bleed effect and not because it was an afterthought because the page looked a little boring and empty and i was like oh no what am i gonna do it's fine everything is on purpose yep for the next page, I thought it was time that Inkashi got back into writing down more complicated, more cohesive trains of thought. This is another pretty significant battle to put under her belt to help her further separate her mindset from the loss of her fellow soldier. So this page is very wordy. I did, however, include a little map of the various planes and their levels according to a D&D diagram. It's a really rough little drawing, and I'm not even sure if the map necessarily applies to this campaign because in this campaign, the various dimensions tunneling into each other and making little pocket spaces and things like that it's it's all a pretty big part of the overarching story but the map felt like a thing that i should include if not as an official in-game map it would be maybe a diagram or something that inkashti would have studied at some point and just made a note of now that we had just fought an ablith confirmed that this was what was poisoning the well we could leave peacefully and complete our contract with lady Steshin and get out of here but no kaiser one of our centaurs decided the best thing to do would be go for a swim it was a very on brand DD experience being equal parts deeply deeply concerning while also ridiculous to the point of hilarity our centaur managed to pick a fight with a were shark i think or maybe it was a merfolk he had swum out i think about 80 feet trying to collect loot probably and he was caught alone i think he was knocked unconscious and healed back up to take swings maybe in four or five consecutive rounds before he was able to deal enough damage that either he defeated the were shark or that the dm felt like the player was punished enough for his greed though the abolith fight didn't quite do it this definitely dropped me down to my last two spell slots even with all the hilarity that ensued it was a really really good bonding opportunity for kaiser and inkashi and other healers and i i always enjoy a good character friendship progression moment i think it, it's nice it just warms my heart finally returned successfully from the water plane the abolith being dragged by the party out of the rift and up the stairs very unceremoniously to lady steshin who was both mortified and pleased with our accomplishments. She recommended that we discreetly take the remains to the Garden of the Dead, which is a cemetery across the way with a large black stone mausoleum-like building in the center of it, which is what I am drawing here. And I definitely took some creative liberties as to what a mausoleum look like. Um, I just wanted to draw another cool building with domes. When I started this journal project, I really dreaded working on the architectural drawings because it's just, it's not my thing but i think the process of putting in the guidelines and planning out the different features has 
has actually grown on me quite a lot. But before I address the significance of this mausoleum, there was the issue of being discreet with a 20 foot long soggy mucus dripping abolith body. The initial plan was to cast enlarge reduce and shrink the abolith and then sneak him across the road quietly without anyone being the wiser. And I was being a little pompous in game and was like, oh Lady Steshin, see our magic abilities and our value as a party. Why don't you go up on the roof and see how we navigate this issue? And when she left to go onto the roof to watch a sneak across the street, our warforged artificer admitted that he was out of spell slots and couldn't cast in large reduce. So I'm freaking out because I'm all embarrassed. I hyped up this whole plan. We had one job. We have to do a good job. And Darren, our rogue, who took a level in Bard at his last level up, said, now hold on guys, I got this. And what, what we ended up doing was some of us pumped our last spells into the strong boys, so Kaiser the Centaur, Volkmar the Goliath, and Joash our Barbarian, to make them very speedy and extra strong and then some of us put these spell slots into Darren who is our bardish rogue um, and he was going to play the bagpipes in the streets as a distraction and we rolled just incredibly well. I'm pretty sure it was all 18s and up across the board. We we should not have been able to pull that off and somehow we did. Um, needless to say after that whole debacle, a lady session was very impressed and enamored with Darren from that point on. Inside the mausoleum we get to meet Lady Steshin's um, disposal services. It's actually the headquarters for one of the two most prominent assassin's guilds that pretty much run the city. The two guilds being the Alga Hasak or the Sunset Guild and the Sum or the Toxin Guild. The mausoleum belonged to the Alga Hasak and we got to meet the sort of head of the association whose name is Staladir. Staladir was somewhat impressed by our Abolith extermination abilities and he decided to let us know that the two assassin guilds are currently engaged in a turf war and should we happen to take an interest in really destroying the source of the poison and the slods, the Sum guild would be significantly less guarded this upcoming night, and consequently more vulnerable to a third party infiltration. And at this point, everybody who is a spell slot reliant caster requests that the party goes to bed early, including myself, and then we all decide to set out later that night to stake out the Soom's guilds headquarters. Which brings us to the last two pages of this journal video, and I go back to reuse a technique that I did in the first video of this series, which is to scribble notes kind of haphazardly on a spare piece of textured paper, as if Inkashi hadn't brought her journal with her to this location, and she wrote on a spare napkin or a piece of paper. The party finds themselves in just the most rickety, run-down, uh, rebuilt tavern that you've ever seen. It's stationed just a little outside the Sum Guild headquarters, and it it looks like it has seen better days. But with this little piece of paper, I imagine that Joash and Kashti are taking notes for how to best go about starting their move into the headquarters itself. Meanwhile, on the other side of the paper, we have drawings of Kaiser, we have tic-tac-toe games, where the person who is playing as X keeps winning, and the person who keeps playing as O is really upset about it. I did try to change my handwriting up to look different. I, I it's okay. I also tried drawing Kaiser with my left hand. And you can, you can actually see just how far behind my left hand is in terms of being able to draw or write anything. Uh, I don't know if that's something I should be concerned about. Another thing that I learned that I really love doing over the course of making this journal is drawing water rings and drips and stains on paper. It's just really satisfying and it adds a whole lot of character and storytelling to a page without a whole bunch of work. This whole napkin pre-planning stage is actually a huge nod to something that happened outside of the game, so the players got together in the discord chat a little early to discuss various plans and ways to go about infiltrating the assassins guild, and our plan was to start a bar fight that we brought out into the streets and eventually in the chaos and confusion we either barge our way in or sneak our way into the guild headquarters, destroying as much as we could in our wake. We're not the most subtle of groups, we have some specific characters that are good at the sneaky sneak, but we are a large party with goliaths and centaurs and paladins and barbarian and and sneaking sneaking is just not our 
party's collective strong suit. So if raining fire on everyone didn't work, we did discuss a second plan, which is why Kaiser and the Drawing of Centaurs is so prominently featured on the little scrap napkin insert. Kaiser is a centaur who is flavored I guess to be 10 feet tall which technically would classify him as a large creature but we don't play him as a large creature for the sake of game mechanics but we were wondering if we could persuade the DM that by casting the enlarge spell on Kaiser he would technically be a huge creature uh spoiler alert we did not convince the DM but also giant horse never came to fruition anyway so it, it is what it is but it was a very humorous conversation that kind of stuck with me and I wanted to be sure and include a nod to it in this journal that I am creating. For the last majority of the session, we started the bar fight. Well, I I started it, Kalashjar telepathy, I convinced a goblin that I was his subconscious and that he really needed to pick a fight with the centaur sitting across the tavern, but it didn't really take much to get everyone else in the tavern riled up. We had a very fun time just smacking each other into tables and generally causing chaos until we made our way crashing through the front door of the Sum Guild. But the tavern is the last painting I have made for this journal, so now it's time for the reveal. I had a lot of fun filming the reveal. I had the most janky setup. There was water everywhere. Um, I also had a lot of fun making the props. Uh, the horrible green slime slod juice is just dyed passion fruit syrup. Don't worry about it. But I really enjoyed making the props and eating the prop cheese. Fever ideas really, really can be some of the best ones or worst ones. But you know, I hope I get to do a lot more cinematic reveals with better lighting, maybe better equipment someday. I know, I know I didn't do the classic invisible ink like I do in my other two videos just because Inkashti was a lot more mission focused and less sorcery focused in these particular entries but I hope you enjoyed it anyways I wasn't expecting this to be one of my best performing series on the channel but the first video in the journal series has over 6,000 views now which is the most views on a video I've ever had ever through all time so thank you so much that is amazing I appreciate your patience and support as I work through this series and the story and hopefully next video I won't sound like a hot mess but but who knows, not me.